Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles, and I welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have an interesting ep- episode for you guys. You definitely want to stick around for. So let me just get into this. Um, so this video here. So I think the majority of us are still trying to process this news that Kevin Durant wants to be traded from the Brooklyn Nets. I think that's pretty much what all of us, um, you know, are going through. And I think after the news broke, many of our viewers were basically trying to make sense of what is happening. I remember when we were doing the live and people were like, what? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? This is unbelievable. I can't believe that's that was the predominant emotion that was running through the comment section uh, during that live. And I think that we were trying to understand What was KD's breaking point? I and many out there believed that he wanted to leave because of the dysfunctional environment that the Brooklyn Nets organization had degenerated into. It had turned into a total mess. There was no leadership in sight whatsoever when we were discussing the Brooklyn Nets. And and it seemed to me the organization didn't have a clear direction or did not didn't have a clear understanding of what direction they wanted to they were heading into. You had the situation with Kyrie, which was in limbo. Then ultimately he decided to come back. And then you had the Ben Simmons situation. He hadn't played a single game with that team, and we don't even know what's happening with him. And then of course you had the uncertainty with Kevin Durant that I'm sure that he was feeling. Um, but now it seems as if that KD may have wanted to be traded from the Brooklyn Nets for an entirely different reason than many of us believe. And we're getting this information. We got this information uh, from Fox Sports Radio, uh, The Odd Couple via Adrian Wojnarowski. I was watching a segment on um, The Odd Couple this morning and Chris Broussard and Rob Parker basically broke this story. Now, before I go any further, this video is brought to you by Aura, the official sponsor of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who is the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web, and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened. In addition, Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds, someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at aura.com slash dreamers pro. And when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below. Also know that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So for those of you who missed this report that just came out less than 24 hours ago, take a listen to what this report had to say via uh, the odd couple. Then we're going to come back and really unpack this thing. Take a listen to that there. Interesting comments by Adrian Wojnarowski. Obviously, as plugged in as it gets in the NBA. Here are a few things he said, Rob. I I want your responses. Here's one thing he said that kind of motivated Kevin Durant and his decision to request a trade so soon, quite frankly. Woj, Golden State winning the championship this season and just the flood of criticism and second guessing that landed on Kevin Durant, I think it contributed to a tipping point. He goes on, the Warriors winning a championship played a factor in this. I think it exacerbated Kevin Durant's frustration. I think the narrative that surrounded him that he dealt with in the aftermath of him leaving Golden State and then going on to win a title without him contrasted with what has gone on in Brooklyn in these last three years. First of all, let me say this. I 100% believe this report, and I'll tell you why. The number one reason 
I believe this report to be true is history. Kevin Durant has a well-documented history of, re of responding to things like this. He has gone back and forth on more than one occasion, on one, more than two occasions, with people on social media who have questioned the impact that he had on those Golden State Warriors teams, the championship teams uh, that, you know, that he was on when he arrived at that team, I believe it was in the summer of 2016, 2017, if I'm not mistaken, when the Golden State Warriors blew a 3-1 lead to the Cleveland Cavaliers and they lost uh, that championship. It was the season that they went 73-9 uh, during that season, right? So that's the first thing. He has also gone back and forth with prominent voices in the sports world like Charles Barkley when they came out there, when Charles Barkley basically came out there and asked the question, is KD, uh, was KD a bus driver? KD came out and responded to that. That also was well documented. So I believe that the chat around the Warriors winning another title without him really got to him. I 100% believe that based on his actions in the past because KD responds to things like this. And finally, the other thing that makes me believe this was when he responded to the comments that Draymond Green made on the volume, when Draymond Green said Stephen Curry got double teamed seven times as much or something like that, uh, you know, uh, um, as it pertains to, what is it, to Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant says, I 100% disagree with that. That's not how he believes that situation. So obviously, KD is cognizant of this conversation that's taking place out there. And he's constantly uh, interacting with people who are having this conversation. So I definitely, definitely uh, believe that. So that's one thing. And I and I do believe that it played a role. And I also believe that the, the drama surrounding Kyrie Irving also played a factor. Now, whether or not KD is going to publicly admit that or not, that, that is totally irrelevant. I'm just telling you guys what I believe. And as y'all remember... When Kyrie was going into his contract negotiations, Kyrie Irving wanted the Supermax deal. He wanted the Supermax contract with the, uh, what is it, with the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets told him no. And then Kyrie Irving said, well, if you're not going to do that, then please find a suitable destination for me. And we found out that the Lakers were the only team that was really interested in signing Kyrie Irving. And there, and then after that, he, hopped, he opted in into his $36 million contract. And then, uh, you know, to go, you know, um, and then now he's, uh, we're hearing reports are saying that he's still trying to find a way to get to LA. So once Kevin Durant heard that bit of information, he's like, wait a minute, James Harden is gone. We don't know what the hell is going on with Ben Simmons. And Kyrie Irving has made it clear that he wants out because you know, the Nets are not willing to give him his money. And if I'm KD and I'm sitting back looking at all of this, I'm like, why in the hell would I want to be here? And let me say this. Let me say this. Some people are criticizing Kevin Durant for wanting to leave the Brooklyn Nets. Some people are like, no, 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 no. You should, you know, stay there, try to work it out. Do your best to figure it out. Let me let me let me let me let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about people, right? People will advise you on anything if you give them the platform to do so. I find it funny that people are telling KD that he should go stick it out in a situation as toxic and and as and as and as messy as that one. And if he does stick it out, he's the one that's going to deal with it, not the people that told him to deal with it. He should stay. Why? So what if he stays and the situation continues to deteriorate? He's the one that's going to be dealing with it. Meanwhile, you're not going to be facing those challenges. Let me say this. No one knows what's best for you like you once you reach a certain age. Once you once you, once you become a once you become a mature adult, no one knows what's best for you. No one really knows what makes you happy except you. KD, I think, is doing a smart thing by listening to himself and doing what gives him peace. Not what the not what the viewing public wants, but what he wants. If this decision gives him peace, by all means, have at it. I think Katie has spent too much time listening to the opinions of others, especially the opinions of people that have no direct bearing on his life. Why do you care? So if the guy wants to do that, go do what makes you happy. This is my, you don't look weak to me. You look strong because you're doing what makes you happy. Weak, the weak thing to do is doing what people expect you to do. That's the weak thing to do, in my personal opinion. If it makes you happy that you want to get out of a, a toxic situation, kudos to you. 
You heard Kendrick Perkins. He gave him his props for that. So I, I totally support the guy wanting to get out of a messy situation. And I also support it. James Harden wanted to leave the Brooklyn Nets when he figured out that that thing was going nowhere. Now, some people say, oh, no, no, he has a history of quitting, whatever. But at least he had enough sense to realize what was happening. And now, look, the guy looks like a prophet. Can you imagine if he stayed and was still a part of this mess? So I'm happy that he decided to move on. Good for him. And as far as this report goes, I believe, in fact, that it's true. It is plausible that this report is true from Adrian Wojnarowski saying that the chatter around the Golden State Warriors winning another championship, you know, uh, uh, you know, after KD's departure, got him. I believe that based on all the things that Kevin Durant has responded to in the past. So these are my thoughts. And the question really uh, is uh, the question really that then goes to the audience. What do you think about all of this? Why do you think KD really wants out of Brooklyn? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts in the comment section and we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.